to moan. I've logged on a little bit early. Um, everything's just a bit crazy here at the moment. So I've got a couple of minutes um, just to get started. So today I'm doing a video on my xanthalasma removal. So if you don't know what xanthalasma is, it is a fatty deposit and it's usually linked to high cholesterol. So it's usually like around the eyes and some people get it all around here and there. I had mine here, as you can see on the photo that I put on my thumbnail. Um, I'm going to have to keep checking here if anybody messages me because it's not coming up with any chat. So let me just bring that up. Okay, so first and foremost, I just want to say a quick disclaimer. Um, I'm not suggesting that anybody uses a wart and a pen to remove the xanthalasma. I'm just purely sharing what I did five years ago and yeah, what I did because I get a lot of questions on my most popular video and I've linked that in, I've pinned it on the chat and I've also put it in the description box and the comments, I think as well. So I think I've got four videos in total talking about it, doing an update. So I'm just going to try and keep things as simple as possible because like I said, I get the same type of questions regularly in the comments section, so I'd love to be able to answer them. Hi, Hemu Art World. I hope you're well. So, yeah, so obviously, usually on my chats, I get like regular people come in, so it's going to be a different type of conversation that I'm having today, and it's just going to be the topic of xanthalasmas. So, and I'll try and put timestamps anyway for specific questions after I've done the live. But if you do have any questions, then please just put them on the chat. So like I said, disclaimer, not suggesting anybody does it. The first question that I get asked a lot is, did it hurt? It stung when I first did it, um, like for, for 10 seconds, and then after it was fine. Even when you see the scab forming and everything, it's... It, I was surprised it wasn't painful. It looks a lot worse than what it felt like. I get asked how many times did I apply the water and a pen? I applied it twice, but I think one time would have been enough. And if you go through the comment sections of my videos, you'll see that some other people have used the water and a pen and they've done it the one time and had really good results. Um, and another question that I get asked is where did I buy the water pen from? So I bought mine from a pharmacist, like a shop in England called Boots, but I don't think they sell it there anymore. Um, so I have linked, again, I've pinned it and I've put it in the description and I've put it in the comments section as well of where I got it from, where you can purchase it. So you can get it on amazon.co.uk and you can also get it on the amazon.com link. When I've tried to find it, on Amazon in India because a lot of my subscribers and people that comment are from India. I tried to have a look and see if it was on the Amazon India site and I wasn't able to find it. I think you might be able to get it on eBay, but the problem is some people have bought the Wartner pen and it's not been like a pen. So if you look at my first video that I did three years ago, I think it was, it's a very thin tip, so it's very easy to apply the the gel or the solution. Um, but someone mentioned before that they'd bought it and they would have to get something to put it on. I would be I would be worried about doing that definitely. Um, another question was, um, did I wash it after? I didn't wash it after. I just left it on. It went frosty white color, and I just left it. I did put coconut oil around it before I applied the water pen because I didn't want to damage the skin around it. But I've read that some people use Vaseline around the xanthalasma and then apply the solution. And I get asked a lot, did I clean it after? So when it was healing, like it took about two weeks to heal, did I do anything with it? I tried to keep mine as dry as possible because I wanted that scab to form and I wanted scarring to be minimal because mine it wasn't massive if you look at it, but I felt like if the scar was huge, it would be really, really noticeable. Like I said, you can't, you can't see it. So I just left mine, um, but I do know that one lady on one of my last videos where I made an, um, a video about her journey, 
she put oil of ole on i believe and she's not had any scarring and she had really big ones any people that's watching if you can give this video a thumbs up that'll be fantastic and share it with people who you think might want to see this video and please leave me a comment um after the video as well if you if if you can so yeah i i i didn't want to wet it like i said but some people have and then some people have managed to get steam on it when they're in the shower or whatever and they've still not had any problems so that's good news isn't it um so yeah and it it was scary i would say after about five yeah five days for me my eye swelled up really bad and it looked like it was weeping like oozing I, re I was really worried that it was infected and I was so close to going to the hospital because although I'd read about other people doing it and I'd seen it on tv in clinics doing it at home I hadn't seen anyone made make a detailed video on it on youtube so it was such a risky decision to do but I am really glad that I did it because if you have a xanthal asthma and I've read a lot of your comments and it can, you know, really knock your confidence, um, you know, you just be really self-conscious, it's very difficult to cover up and a lot of subscribers when the men have spoke about how it's not easy for them to cover it up and they might wear glasses um, to try to hide them but there's not a lot you can do, even me when I had it and I tried to cover it with with makeup that covers tattoos it still didn't cover it because it's risen so if you if you have one you'll know what I mean but if you don't have one if it was a flat surface it might be easy to hide but it's really like raised up so it's really difficult to cover up and it's very noticeable so people would say to me um oh you've got something on your eye and think that I can wipe it away and it was starting to grow and that's when I was like right okay I want to do something about it but the clinics was charging a lot and there wasn't a lot of clinic I don't think there was any in my area at the time that was doing it so I would have had to travel down south to go and get it done and I didn't have that kind of funds the water pen what I bought I think it was about six to nine pounds I want to say but I can't remember now because obviously it's been five years um when I talked about that it hasn't come back I spoke about this in my first video when I did remove it I didn't change the way that I ate and I was eating a high fat diet so I would say that it was virgin on keto like stroke paleo a lot of eggs um coconut oil um beef chicken beef drippings things like that so whilst i actually lost weight i really feel like that was that them that way of eating is what caused this sample asthma and i'm just checking to see if i've got any messages no so i um yeah so i really believe that it was the way of eating that triggered mine i know some people in the comments have said that they've had a traumatic experience or they've eaten a certain way and they feel like it's brought it on others have said it's hereditary there's been a couple of people who said they're vegetarians and they've got it but again I was eating a lot of cheese that was it as well so when I got rid of the xanthal asthma and I didn't change my way of eating I saw that pinpricks were starting to come around the xanthal asthma I was really worried about that because I thought if it's if it's not going to go on the scar mark and it's going to go around it it's literally going to go on all of my eyelid and i i was fearful because i thought if i tried to use the water pen on say the eyelid it could really damage it so because obviously water water pen is for warts but the active ingredient in there is tca which is the acid that they use i think they might use it for face peels and things in the, you know in differing like you know five percent solution or whatever i'm not sure um but obviously it's an acid and it, you've got to be so careful with it on your face so i was worried about it and it was growing but then that's when i decided to change my way of eating and i started eating a predominantly plant-based diet one thing that i cut out was i did cut out the coconut oil as well because i was really worried about it being that because i'd I used to have a lot of it a day because it did really help me to lose weight um so I cut that out 
red meat, cheese, dairy, everything. And I use I would have the occasional fish. Thank you so much for four likes. I really appreciate it. Hi Jay. So we've got Jay here. Thanks so much for coming. Um so yeah, so I cut all the so I cut meat out and everything and it stopped growing and it actually went away and I was really surprised. So I would say probably for a, two years I was eating predominantly plant-based. And then when I became pregnant, when I made my first ever video about this, I started to eat a bit of meat again and eggs. Um, not really dairy. I don't eat. I've I've not had dairy now for probably nearly five years. Um, so I have it occasionally, but it's very rare. So I felt like the plant based eat way of eating is what has stopped this from coming back. And yeah, so I'm really really happy with the results. So I've been speaking. For for 11 minutes now and I don't think there's any other questions that anybody else has asked me but I one thing I wanted to ask if anybody is watching this on the replay and if they are from India a few people have asked me in the comment section about um, getting my videos translated um, or with subtitles so if there is a language that you would be interested in me making a Xanthalasma video in then please leave a comment in the comment section you can also contact me on Instagram which some people do as well and they show me what the eye is looking like and things like that so that's in the description and it's also on my home page as well but it's called the multicultural family if you want to have a look and I will link my Xanthalasma playlist at the end of this video so you can see my journey q a update and also when one of my subscribers um allowed me to use her photos to show you what she did and she also comes on the comment sections from time to time and um answers questions which is really lovely of her so i really hope that you found this video useful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you're new here i would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and if you'd like me to make any of these types of videos again then please just let me know. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And thanks for coming on, Jay. Um, bye.